What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys that even a noob like myself, who's never had any experience building a PC before, can do so from scratch. Now this video is catered to newbies like myself, people who have never built a PC before. I just wanted to show you guys that it really isn't that hard and if you're thinking about doing it then maybe you should just bite the bullet and go ahead and give it a go. You will be surprised at how much you can learn about PCs and the different functionalities and the different hardware and software you can buy for a PC and how you can go about installing it. I learned a lot during this process so I really wanted to share this with you guys in hopes that it will encourage you to DIY yourself as well. Now I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea that building a PC is cheap because it really isn't. When it comes to building PCs or upgrading PCs it is something that is costly. Computer parts aren't necessarily cheap because there are so many different parts to buy or so many different things you can upgrade with a PC you do have to give some thought to where you want to concentrate your money. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I built my PC, what I did. Hopefully it can give newbies like myself out there kind of like a guide and a push in order to help DIY and give you guys the confidence to also do this yourself as well. This is exactly everything we are going to be putting into this PC. Just to give you guys a quick rundown, as you can see, we have 850 watts of power we have a radeon rx 580 graphics card we have a usb header splitter we also have the icy box high speed multimedia card reader we've also got the tp link t5e wi-fi card we've got the three blue led fans that come with the gigabyte uh, pc case it is a second hand pc case and we have four hard drives we've got the two seagate 4500 rpm drives the 8 terabyte and then i've also got a 6 terabyte to run our operating system we've got the 256 m.2 ssd we've also got a 2.5 inch ssd as well underneath here we've just got the fan controller we've got 32 gig crucial 8 gigabyte 24 megahertz ram we've also got two extra 4 gigabyte hyper x ram i'm told that you shouldn't really use two different types of ram sometimes they're not compatible but in this case it is compatible we've also got the i7 6800k 3.4 gigahertz intel cpu 6th gen the socket for this is the lga 2011 and then we've got the x99 f8 gaming motherboard these are the tools that i'll be using obviously you need some heat shrink i've heard that this is probably one of the best on the market the mx4 thermal compound by arctic here i've got two torches i've got a little screwdriver i've got a screwdriver that has a flat head and a uh, phillips head as well and another one that has all different types of screws i've got a knife in case i need to cut anything i've got a pair of noodle nose pliers so that i can use it to uh, plug any connections in that are very thin and i can't get my fat fingers in there this is everything that we will be installing into to this PC and as for the PC case I'm using the Gigabyte 3D Aora 570 chassis this is a full ATX tower but that's what I wanted in this case because I wanted to be able to install a number of drives first thing we're going to do is take apart the PC case so that we can see how we're going to install everything and where we're going to route all the cables first thing we're going to do is remove the screws that hold the side cases in place usually there will be screws on the outside of your PC case and it'll be along the back corner we've got these screws that hold it in now, a total of six screws that hold in this side panel and these are the screws here they're usually just M3s so that's six screws I've removed now we just have to pop it out and remove the side case it's different for every PC case for this one you just pop this open because it has an arrow here pointing to open pull that open and then the side case will simply come off we just pull off the side case flip it around take off the other case we'll just take this off now we're going to remove the front the majority of the cases you will see that there's a clip on the inside that allows this entire front piece to clip in you press on the clip and then you push it out like so there's three one two and three if you take a look on this side you'll see that there are three clips here so here's one press on that and you push it forward see how it comes out do the same to the one in the middle and then the one at the bottom and it will all come out now this whole piece just comes out there you go i've already broken one of the clips but there were a total of six so i've got one two three clips on this side but i've only got one clip on this side 
okay but that's all right i'll find a way to fix that that's also why i want to do this video to show you guys that you can make even the smallest mistakes and it can be a costly one the case is completely empty and this is the factory wires that it comes with these are the connections to your front microphone your front headphone your front usb your light and also your power button and your reset button these are the cables to run the three separate fans this will plug into the pc this will plug into the two fans here and then there is another cable that runs in here that's going to plug into the fan that's in the front here okay so for the next step we're going to start putting together the motherboard so what i'm going to do is add the ram the cpu and also the cpu fan cooler now the reason why i like to start by putting this together is because there is a possibility of warping or scratching or even breaking your motherboard if you install it onto the pc case with the stands that raise it up and then you go to push down on it when you're installing either ram your cpu or even your cpu cooler there is a fair amount of pressure sometimes that you have to push down on in order to get it to fit and that's why i find that it's a better idea to install it off the pc case that way you have a flat area in order to apply pressure and you can eliminate the possibility of uh, warping your motherboard basically due to pressure and also because it's standing on top of the little risers that it sits on that uh, increases the chance of you cracking the board that's why i like to start off um, with these being installed off the pc case and everything else you can install while it's in the pc case so we're going to install the ram first and then we're going to install the cpu and then the fan move everything aside and we'll take this motherboard out of the case i'm going to have links to all the items that I have bought in the description so be sure to check it out we're going to start off with the RAM we'll open up all these now I've already tested this so I know exactly how the RAM is supposed to be fitted in you do have to be careful on how your RAM sits you need to make sure that the gap here see that gap there it has to line up with the, the gap for the RAM we need to make sure that that lines up so we'll put that in and then all we do now is we press down and we will hear it snap in place. I do not want any flex when I'm installing this because you don't want the board to bend in any way. And push down. Okay, and just follow suit. You hear that click? That's letting you know that you have installed the RAM correctly. Now we can install our CPU and the fan cooler the cpu fan cooler this is just a cover so you can take that right off then we need to open up this this is the lga 2011 socket so it's a little bit different to the 1511 socket but basically they all work the same way there is a certain way you install the cpu always follow where your triangle is that's what marks the spot so if you take a look at this you can see there's a triangle there that triangle is to match this triangle here there's a triangle on the CPU board there and there's a triangle here. What we need to do is match that. Now, when you go to install your CPU, be careful not to drop it down accidentally. Just line it up and slowly pull it down. Ensure that it is in there and then you need to close it up. You need to make sure firstly, your CPU is seated properly. Make sure that you close the second uh, clip first then the first one you notice how this part here has a clip that goes over the top you need to make sure that this goes under that clip and then you press it down and you put it underneath the uh, clip here do the same for this side and voila that is your cpu installed then you can simply put this to the side and keep it for uh, when you do decide to move your motherboard around you want to put this in so that nothing can damage the pins it's very important that nothing ever damages the pins to install the cpu cooler you have a bracket for your cpu cooler so that your fan can sit directly on the bracket here this installs like this there are four screw points one two three four just to make it a bit faster okay it's in, it's in, it's in. Now, the most important part. Always make sure that if your CPU or your fan cooler does not come with factory thermal paste, then you need to ensure that you put your own thermal paste on. People apply thermal paste differently. This is the way that I like to do it. I just put a dollop right in the center and then I simply put my CPU fan directly on top. 
you just need a little amount not a lot just a little bit all we need to do now is install our uh, cpu cooler fan this goes a certain way there's an arrow pointing to how the direction of air goes that points to the back of the fan where all the hot air will be directed and therefore introduce cool air this has a uh, dual fan system and it has rgb lights as well place this right in the center of it these work off clips these clips simply clip onto these two parts of the bracket okay so we're just going to put that down now right in the center okay so push down clip it on you feel a bit of tension that's okay and then you push down on this side and clip you plug in our cpu plug now we can install our m2 ssd drive that we're going to use to run our operating system and some of our drivers and we're going to be installing that in the top here do that by unscrewing our mounting screw plug this in push it down and put the screw back in and that's it you know at first I, I used to always buy uh computers as well but then after i started getting into um computers um, i realized that it is a lot cheaper to build your own pc than it is to buy one pre-built so that's why i wanted to do this video for you guys so you guys can see for yourself that it really isn't that hard to build your own pc you know and you really should just give it a go and there we go let's make sure the m.2 drive is uh, plugged in properly as well just want it snug we now can install this motherboard the way it is into the pc case and then begin to install everything else depending on the size of your graphics card that will determine whether or not you're going to install it now or later on now i will install it later on because i need to be able to gain access to all the mounting screws what we're going to do now is install our motherboard stands uh, sometimes they come in black sometimes they come in gold in my case they are gold and this is what it is right here these are your motherboard stands you need to have a look at your motherboard manual or your uh, pc case manual and it will tell you according to the codes on the pc case which one is for your type of motherboard i'm using an atx motherboard and according to the user manual all the a's are for atx so i have to install all of these motherboard stands from a1 to a9 what it doesn't say is that my motherboard has 11 screws that secure the motherboard to the pc case i installed the other two where i needed them okay so now that we have the pc stands installed we can now install our motherboard grab my motherboard what we're going to do is guide our back panel into the slot here that was designed for it make sure everything is out of the way we have a clean area i'm going to guide this back panel in so that it lines up now i can see that the motherboard is lined up with the back panel here i just have to make sure that the screw holes all line up and then i can begin to install my screws i have a total of 11 so we're just going to do this quickly okay and also make sure you use the correct screws in order to mount your motherboard Okay. I'm not going to tighten them until I get every single screw in. That way I know I'm not going to force any of these screws in. Alright, so that's all the screws tightened. What I want to do next is install the fans that came with this PC case. There are a total of three first thing I'll do is install the front one so this is what it uh, looks like um, it's different for every case all you do is ensure that the wire for your fan will come out to this point here so that you can plug in your fan when need be we're trying to direct air into the PC case install the fan into this case like so okay and then i'm going to make sure i feed my cable through here there is an opening at the top right here and then just simply install my fan it clips in the way you install the fan is by using these rubber push clips they go through the chassis into the fan out through the mounting holes like so okay so you would push it into the chassis and then through the the fan and then once you push in this clip it would expand the clips on the outside here so that it would hold the fan in place so it's a quick release way to move and install your fans we want to make sure that our cable is faced in the direction of how we're going to plug it in as well usually there is a screw that holds it in but for this particular pc case you don't have screws you only have these plastic push clips 
Okay, so I'm just going to continue to install these plastic push clips. All right, push that in. Another thing is we want to direct the air outside, so we want to be sucking hot air out of the PC case and blow it out. And that's it. We can now install our power switches for the front panel. Also, all the required plugs that will run the front panel. You have your reset switch, you have your power switch, and then you've also got your HDD LED. You need to check your motherboard manual so that you just want to make sure that you install them the right way. So we'll take a quick look at the manual so that we know exactly how to plug in our front panel uh, plugs. Looking at the manual on my phone here, we can see that the reset switch goes to the top left hand corner, the power switch goes to the bottom left hand corner, and then you've got a location for your HDD LED and your power LED. We want to start from the bottom so that as we're plugging it in, we have room to plug the rest in. If you plug in the top ones first, you're going to have trouble plugging in the bottom ones. So we'll go with the power switch first, which is in the bottom left hand corner. We can now plug in our reset switch, which goes right above it. And lastly, our HDD LED. And that goes in the top right hand corner. Do make sure that the pins are, are plugged in how they are set out. You leave one pin, which is this pin here, and you plug in the rest of the pins. Now we can plug in our front panel. You're going to have USB and you'll have HD audio. This PC case is an older model, so it also has a 1394 style plug. We are not going to be using that, so we're not going to plug that in. First, we'll plug in our audio. Now it's very important here that you follow how the pins are lined. There's a pin missing here. A total of only nine pins. So let me show you what it looks like. So as you can see there, that's how you plug it in. You need to make sure that you line the pins up with the plug. So if there is a pin missing there, make sure you line that up or you can destroy the pins. Now HD audio plug, we have a pin missing on the bottom line, one from the left. We do the same with our plug. It will plug straight in. If it's not plugging in, make sure that you have aligned the pins properly with the appropriate holes. We'll plug in our USB front USB so you've got to look for F USB I plug it in one of the F USBs now that's in and then of course if your motherboard does not have a um, CMOS battery be sure you get one it's usually a CR2032 make sure you install a battery there's no other connections for AC97 and uh, I'm not using the 1394 plug if I was there would be a 1394 style header what I'm going to do is install the graphics card and from there we're going to install the power here we have our Radeon RX 580 graphics card in order to install it on this different PC cases are going to work differently usually there will be a number of screws that you need to unscrew so that you can get your rear slots out. That's these things here. However your graphics card is going to sit in, you have to remove the slots depending on where you install your graphics card. Usually it's always going to be on the top PCIe the time 16 slot. Um, I'll leave it for somebody else to explain all that, but um, all I know is that you usually install the graphics card on the top PCIe time 16 slot. That's going to be this slot here with the heavy duty silver surround. When you go to install your graphics card, you're going to have these slots at the back of your PC case here. Now you need to remove them in order to install your graphics card. I have removable slots, so I could just remove it. Now, if you don't have removable slots, you're going to have to break it so that you can get your graphics card in. I've already removed mine, so now I'm just going to line up the pins with the slot and then push it straight down so that it plugs directly in. Make sure no other cables are in the way. Push straight down. Because mine don't have screws in order to screw down the graphics card or any of the slots, I just have this little handy clip here. So all I do is simply push down and it clips into place. While we have this open, I'm also going to install my Wi-Fi card. I'm going to plug it in the next PCIe slot, put it in, line up the slot and then push it straight down. Now I'm just going to clip it down this comes with another USB header plug. So this is going to plug into another USB header. What we're going to do next is install our power source. It's a 850 watt power source. 
every case is going to be different this installs at the top now this is easier done standing up all we're doing now is lining up the power supply with the appropriate holes where your screws go in to uh, secure it just tighten it down so that's our power supply installed this is where we start to plug in all our different power supplies before i do all that i just want to install two other devices this is the IC box multimedia card reader so i'm going to install this in the 3.5 inch slot as this is a 3.5 inch box i have two slots where i can install 3.5 inch devices feed the cables in and push my 3.5 inch into it so that it's ready to be plugged in and all the cables routed. I'm just gonna follow the rails and push it straight in. There we go. Also, I'm going to install a 5.25 inch fan controller with a temperature sensor as well. You can sense the temperature inside the PC case. At the same time, you can control up to five fans. Same principle, you push in all your cables and then you line up your 5.25 inch with the rails and then you simply just push down on it until you get it flush with the case okay so we just pull the cables through like so and then we just push our case in until it's flush we go to the back and we'll pull all our cables through so that we can get ready to plug everything in correctly everything's a bit messy at the moment but don't worry about that we can tidy everything up with some zip ties and uh, it will all look perfect once we uh, are done what we're going to do now is install all the cables for the 3.5 inch multimedia card reader first we have a SATA connection a USB connection and also a Molex connection but what I need to worry about first is the USB and also the USB 3.0 connection you don't have a USB 3.0 connection on your motherboard what this comes with is one of these here you install that at the back of your P slot so that your cable can sit in it and you can plug this into the back panel of your motherboard giving you a usb 3.0 uh, fast connection push this through our spare slot around everything and then we'll push it out the back panel next we have our sata cable you need to plug this into your sata connection for your motherboard right now we have the graphics card in the way we need to remove the graphics card quickly so that we can plug it in now with our graphics card released we need to figure out how many SATA cables we're going to be using. So I need to make sure that I plug in three SATA cables and also the one for the multimedia card reader. If you take a look at the SATA connection, it has a little L shape. You have to follow that shape so that it will plug in. All right, so now we're gonna plug that in, get ready for our other hard drives. And then we'll plug this in here. We'll plug this one in here. We have all our SATA cables plugged in, ready to go. Said there is a USB connection on this multimedia card reader. At our motherboard, it only had two USB header connections. To plug this extra one in by a header splitter, and that's this thing right here. Okay, so basically, it plugs into your USB header, and then it splits it into four connections. Unplug one of our USB connections. That USB connection now plugs into this board we simply plug this splitter into the board our usb connection for our multimedia reader will then plug into one of these now we're going to install our solid state drive and our hard drives this is our ssd 256 gigabyte so we're going to plug that in right here we'll mount this where we want it for this particular pc case it comes with rails so that you can install your hard drives so that's normally how your hard drive comes okay there's your hard drive now normally you have screw holes so that if your pc case didn't have these slide in clips you would have to screw them in or screw them into a, a mount like this or rails like this and then you push it into the pc case slot for it in my case you just have these um, rails and you simply push them in like so and once you have them in, you're ready to install your hard drive. Take note of where your plugs are for your hard drive. And you want to make sure your plugs are on the open end side. It simply slides in the mounting spot for your hard drives. You have these two rails here. Now just slide that in, follow the rail, and push it in until it clips into place. 
We've got the clips installed. We slide it in until it clips in as well. We can plug in our SATA cables into our hard drives. We can now begin to route our power cables. We have a 8 pin with a 6 pin for the graphics card. We have a 24 pin for the motherboard and then we have an 8 pin for the CPU. Looking at your motherboard, you'll see one side has a tab. So obviously that's the side where your clip's going to go on. So you simply just put that in and you plug that in. You have your 24 pin ATX, which obviously goes into your 24 pin. You have a tab on this side. So obviously your clip goes on the side where your tab is. This is our graphics card connection. This graphics card has a eight pin and a six pin. You need to use both in order to work the LEDs as well. Make sure your clips are on the same side. Plug it in. I'm going to plug in this fan here and as you can see it has a two-way here and another one here so that's three fans in total now I know that I have a fan controller but I'm not sure which one I'm going to plug them in yet so at the moment I'm just simply going to plug these ones into the fan cable and uh, we'll just run it like that for now we'll plug in our SATA connection you just got to find the best way to arrange your cable so that it gives you the best connection without too much fuss SATA connection for our SSD drive in here but at the same time we also have a Molex power cable for our card reader we pull out our Molex for the uh, multimedia card reader plug that into here there's a there's one side that is flat and one side that is curved so just follow that and it will plug right in we also have our other molex cables here that need to plug into the other two molex cables that run the um, led lights for my pc case we plug one in here then these can simply run off each other it's very messy at the moment we want to make sure everything works before we start to zip tie anything down so the first thing we're going to do is test the system plug it into a, a display and make sure that everything works before we begin to zip tie everything down now i know for a fact that this all works but i'm just going to show you that it does work okay so moment of truth i did say from the start that i've already uh, tested this pc to make sure that everything works so um it, it was a no-brainer that everything was obviously going to work but just to show you guys that it does all work this is what the pc is running we have the Windows 10 Home 64-bit. Uh, we have the Intel i7 6800K 3.4 gigahertz. We have the 40 gig RAM. We have the X99 F8 uh, motherboard. We have a Samsung display, which is the TV. And then we have the 8 gigabyte Radeon RX 580. We have the 256 gigabyte SSD. We have the six terabyte, eight terabyte, and the 256 Samsung M2 SSD. That's how you can successfully build a PC and get it up and running. If you guys want to see how to actually get the uh, Windows up and running, um, comment below and let me know. I'll be sure to do a video showing you guys how you boot your computer once you have everything installed and what you need to do in order to get Windows to um, install. Okay, and well, that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please smash that like button and as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell in order to keep up with the uploads. This isn't the end of the W204 videos and the other videos that I have done. Rest assured that I will be doing more videos just like that. This is just something else that I wanted to share with you guys. So, until next time guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I really hope everyone is staying safe during this pandemic. It really is a very hard time for everyone. So I wish everybody the best. We all need to help support each other. Let's get through this together. Bye for now.